Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today's episode is Free Will, a litmus test for critical analysis and maturity. Okay, and like we're taping this on December 12th, 2013, and, um, all right, let's just get right into it, because like, all right, because we should. All right, here's what I mean. You know, like, there's, there's like, psychologists have these tests. They can test, let's say, a toddler, a four or five-year-old, and they'll say to the toddler, listen, you can have, like, one cookie right now or one marshmallow right now, right? But if you wait 10 minutes, you can have two, right? So they, you know, like, so some little kids will say, well, I want the one cookie or mushroom now. Other kids will say, no, I'd rather wait. And with that simple test, they can predict academic success in college better than like through SAT scores. So that's pretty, you know, it's pretty amazing that, that, that such, you know. So this, so the, the theme behind this show is like, you know, there's these intelligent tests, you know, I, IQ tests and all like, and they measure intelligence, but there's different kinds of intelligence. So like, whether a person understands that free will is impossible or not is a perfect one theme, one question intelligence test that measures critical analysis, how a person can think, not, a person, not how a person can remember or how a person can recite what they've rem- remembered or how a person can learn, but how a person can think. And, and then, like, you know, it's also kind of like a measure of, of maturity because basically, like, the idea is, like, if you, if you get the logic of why free will is impossible, yet you still maintain that you have a free will, that's kind of like it's a lack of intellectual maturity, a, a lack of academic integrity because a lot of these guys, like PhDs, they, um, they either lack critical analysis skills. In other words, like they know how to learn and remember what they've learned and recite what they learn, you know, for tests and stuff. But they don't really know so well. They don't understand what they've learned so well. All right, so like, so this is what, what this is about. Because, um, I mean, why, why this show? Because like, you know, with philosophy, um, you know, academics, like, colleges throughout the United States, maybe throughout the world, over half of philosophers believe that we human beings have a free will. And like, that's like beyond incomprehensible because like, you know, when you think about it, and these philosophers are paid to think, all right? You can excuse kind of like mathematicians and, um, and geologists and stuff for maybe not getting this right, because I don't think about this, right? But, but this free will question, well, he, whether human beings have a free will or not, is probably the most discussed, debated topic in philosophy. And it, it's not, it's, it's really a no-brainer. It's not really that complicated. So like, you know, the fact that over half of philosophers get this wrong just signifies that like in our educational system here in the United States and probably throughout the world, we teach kids how to learn and how to remember what they've learned and then how to recite what they've learned and how to use what they've learned, right? But we don't teach kids, we don't teach, even in, in college, we don't teach people how to think, you know, basic logic, all right? So let me, let me present the argument first and then we'll go to what, you know, how this applies, okay? The idea is... The reason why we don't have a free will, let me like describe, you know, what I mean by free will just very, very um, quickly, hopefully, before getting to this. Free will is like, if we had a free will, we could choose whatever we wanted to, right? You know, the, whatever we chose would be up to us. Nothing that's not in our control would be choosing for us. And there's like, there's some simple ways of understanding why we don't have a free will. For example, if we had a free will, everybody on the planet would be blissed out. We'd be like happy, really happy, super happy every moment of every day because, I mean, who would choose to think unpleasant thoughts? These unpleasant thoughts, negative thoughts, negative moods, negative emotions, they come into our minds, right? And like, we don't invite them, you know, who would of their own free will, you know, invite those thoughts? Or sometimes we do the wrong thing, whatever. So the idea is like, you know, that's that's pretty clear, okay? From our experience that we don't have free will. But there's a more fundamental reason why we don't have free will. And that's, all right, so like, 
so yeah, so if we had a free will, we'd be, you know, free to basically, you know, think what we wanted to. Now, all right, so the basic reason we don't have free will, and this is where this theme comes in, you know, it's so basic, it's so logical, is because of causality. Everything has a cause, okay? Nothing happens without a cause. What's a cause? A cause is that something like, you know, these lights are on, right, in the studio. They wouldn't be on unless somebody turned them on, and somebody wouldn't turn them on unless there was a reason for turning them on. In other words, there's a cause to everything. Things don't happen without a cause, couldn't be more simple, okay? Now, here's the thing. A cause is something that happens before whatever it makes happen. So it's like cause and effect. A cause will create an effect, okay? I mean, it's basic. So, like, what happens is, like, a cause comes before the effect. So, like, think about this. This is so basic, and that's why, like, this is such a great litmus test for basic intelligence, for critical analysis. If everything has a cause, then everything we think, feel, say, do, whatever has a cause. Right now, remember, everything has a cause, so that, the cause to whatever we think, feel, say, and do has to have a cause, because everything has a cause. And there's a cause to that cause, there's a cause to that cause, and you've got this chain of cause and effect that goes back before, like, we were born, you know, because that, that right there will tell you that we don't have free will. If, if the chain of cause and effect goes, stretches back before we were born, obviously, what we think, say, feel, do, and all that stuff can't in any way be fundamentally up to us. In other words, <laughs> we're compelled to do whatever we do because of this chain of causality. It's basic. It is basic, 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 all right? Um, so, and again, this, this chain of cause and effect goes back even to before the planet was created, you know, all the way back to the Big Bang, and, and who knows what happened before that. All right, so, like, that can't be more basic. That's simple. I mean, like, and, like, so, like, when academics don't get this, how could you not get this? It's kind of like one plus one equals two. You know, that's how basic it is. So, all right, so that's the second part of this. Um, you know, so this is, like, this free will question is not just a litmus test for critical analysis. It's also a litmus test for maturity, for intellectual integrity. So in other words, like, if you get the logic of this and, and you still maintain you have a free will, you're being intellectually disingenuous. You're being, um, it's immaturity. It's like you want the world to be a certain way and, like, and you can't accept. It's kind of like, like when like, Darwin proposed the theory of evolution back in like, the 1860s or so. There's a lot of people that, you know, they wanted to believe that, you know, we were, like, created from, like, dirt in this Garden of Eden and all that stuff, you know, the biblical myth. And they couldn't accept that we evolved from lower life forms, right? You know, and there's a preponderance of evidence that evolution is true. And even till today, you know, like, in, in the United States, 50% of Americans believe in creationism over evolution. So, like, so basically, you know, a lot of times we believe what we want to believe regardless of the evidence. And so, all right, with, with evolution, it's kind of like, it's complicated because, you know, we're not geneticists, we're not scientists, so we have to take it on faith that what Darwin and subsequent re researchers discovered, Mendel and all, is accurate. It's true, and it is. So, but, but with this question, you don't have to take it on faith. You just like, you know, this is like so basic. Anybody, you know, like, what is causality, cause and effect? How does it apply to basic reasoning, basic um, human will? All right. So I've made, I've made my, my point, my case. And, and, like, I didn't bring any notes today because, like, because I'm, I'm getting tired of doing this show. This is, this is episode number 147. And, um, all right, the show, not just the show, but the meetup that I do in Manhattan, uh, the website, it's pretty much done what I intended it to do. I basically intended to get this issue of whether we have a free will or not, to move it from academia, where it's languished for centuries, pretty much, you know, get it into the public spotlight. Because these academians, I tell you, you know, like, they don't get this... You would think philosophers are pretty, would be pretty good at critical analysis and be, would be good at intellectual integrity. You know, that like, you know, that it's not, you know, they base their conclusions not on how they want the world to be, but how, what the evidence presents. But apparently, apparently, you know, 
they're, they're they can't you can't they're not that bright you know they they may be good at remembering stuff right they may be good at remembering and recalling what they've learned and stuff but that's a very different skill from understanding from simple logic okay critical analysis I'm talking about logic you know one plus one equals two it's logical so all right what else do I have to say about this um, well the reason this is important is because like you know I mean like we're, you know, we're, we're moving into a brave new world here. I mean, like, you know, we're going to have challenges. I was just, like, in Barnes & Noble reading this, like, article in Wired magazine. And, you know, this author talks about, like, in 2004, we had Katrina, you know, hit the United States. And, like, no, that was 2000 and, what was that? I don't know, 2000 and, I don't know. Anyway, uh, maybe, I think, no, that's 2005, I think. 2004, there was, like, a, a tsunami that hit Indonesia, killed like three, four hundred thousand people. Then it was, there was another like hurricane that, that hit Haiti, killed a couple of hundred thousand people. So this stuff, this weather, you know, is, is getting increasingly challenging, all right? And it's going to like stay like this for decades, you know? And I'm an optimist. We're going to like see through it somehow and all. But we're going to have to like, to, to prevent the, the most, you know, the most serious, you know, consequences. We're going to have to like do stuff, and this, this, you know, this doing stuff is going to um, take critical analysis. It's, it's, it's going to take like moving beyond how we want the world to be to understanding how the world is and what we need to do to create a better world or a world as good as it can be. For example, this vegan shirt I'm wearing. Okay, um, that's another thing. Like in terms of like critical analysis. We human beings, we, we're just like, we live in, in a fantasy world, and it's a, it's a world of illusion. And, and I understand this because I did a show on happiness before this, the happiness show. So, like, basically we're driven, we're hardwired to seek pleasure, avoid pain. We're hardwired for happiness. So we're going to believe stuff that makes us happy. That, in, incidentally, is another way of understanding why we don't have a free will. Because if, if all our decisions are based on what we predict is going to make us happier or happy, whatever, then obviously that's not a free will decision. That's not, we're compelled to be that way. So anyway, like, so like with this, um, with, for example, veganism, okay, um, r relative to climate change, 20% um, of greenhouse gases, just a, a bit under 20% um, each year that, that are emitted into the atmosphere come from the livestock industry. The livestock industry is like, you know, beef, um, you know, cattle, um, poultry, you know, pork, you know, th these animals and stuff, right? So here's the thing. So like 20% of, of greenhouse gases comes from that. Now we've got to like, you know, our climate scientists say that we have to reduce green greenhouse gas emissions by 90% of the level that they were in 1990 by 2050 to be relatively safe from the, the worst consequences of climate change, cause, which could get, you know, pretty serious. So, like, all right, that should be a very, very strong incentive for, um, for us to stop eating animals, you know, or at least for, you know, yeah, I mean, we really shouldn't eat them because, like, you know, like, when, when we eat animals, we're less healthy, you know, it's more heart disease, more, you know, just negative stuff. But more fundamentally, I mean, think about it, like, back 200 years ago, maybe, you know, the way we treated animals was relatively compassionately, you know, we, they had relatively normal lives, you know, like the chickens lived with like the hen would live with their chicks and stuff. And like the, the, the cows would live with their offspring and stuff. And they'd live, you know, decent lives, right? You know, several years, whatever, before they were slaughtered and the slaughtering was relatively humane. All right. So like for the last hundred years or so now going on maybe like 120 years at least, um, it's nothing like that, especially over the last 50 years. It's like these animals are tortured. They're, act, they're actually tortured, you know, and some, some people, some really, really, you know, this, this goes to the like, this, that could be another litmus test for criti critical analysis. Some people will say, well, the animals don't feel pain. That is like so, such a brainless thing to say, you know, because anybody who's ever seen a dog, you know, like, you know, wagging his tail and, you know, doing what dogs do or a cat purring or, or dogs like, you know, you, you step on its tail accidentally, you yelps and stuff. Animals feel pain. That's, in, that, you know, it's insane to believe they don't. And, um, and like with, with, with pigs, you know, which like, oh, it's horrible. Like, like 
Um, mother pigs, sows, you know, like they're kept in these crates that like they're so small that they can't even turn around for months at a time. You know, and, and, and pigs are more intelligent than dogs. You know, so they obviously feel more pain than dogs, or you would think so. So anyway, so like this is a this is another example of how like, you know, we we see the world the way we want to see it to make us feel better, but it's not really, you know, it doesn't relate to how the world really is. Um, all right, that's just another example of how, you know, we basically, you know, it's important for us to, to move away from teaching our kids, from teaching ourselves to simply be good at learning and be good at remembering what we've learned and be good at applying what we've learned to like beginning to understand what we're learning, understand, you know, what our basic reality is about. Okay, and, and again, like between climate change, between how we treat animals, you know, there, there's other examples. Um, it's important. It's important. Okay. So what else? Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm getting tired of doing this. Like, um, again, this is like, um, I've been taping the show for like three years. You know, I, I taped, I started taping November 26th, 2010. So this is December 12th, 2013. So three years already. You know, again, this is episode 147. And I think I'm going to like, I'm going to like, you know, segue to some other stuff um, somewhat soon because basically I've done my job, you know, like, you know, again, it takes, you know, you know what's really needed. I got to do a show on this. Before I close the show, um, what would really take this topic over the top so people get it would be a major documentary on why free was impossible. You know, docu theatrical release, you know, like, like Inconvenient Truth or some of Michael Moore's documentaries that everybody sees them and like that explains, you know, because like I, you know, I, I explain it pretty well and all, but I don't have my like, you know, charts and, and diagrams and stuff and like, you know, and there's a credibility factor, okay? Like, you know, you get some like Nobel laureate PhDs explaining this to people, then people would like, you know, because that's, that's kind of like a bias we have. Sometimes we don't, we don't listen to what people say. We listen to, I mean, we, we take into account who's saying what, what, what gets said. All right, um, I want to start, try to, stay on topic more with like this litmus test thing it's you know it opened my it, it opened my eyes because i've been like you know i've been working with this issue, issue for decades but it's only when i started this meetup in manhattan in 2010 i think april and i started talking to people and and i have you know we do this this um live it's we don't we're hardly live anymore but it's in manhattan uh a cable tv show and we kind of like debate the issue and it's only like that, you know, since I've started doing that and since I've started reading the um, publications of like major magazines, newspapers, New York Times, Time Magazine, USA Today, uh, publications of the American Medical Association, which should know better, that, that it's dawned on me how, how clueless, how intellectually deficient so many of the, our leaders, you know, are the the um the, the, our institutions are and you know because like you know the american medical association it's on my website if you go to causalconsciousness.com or google exploring the illusion of free will you know scroll down the home page and you'll see like a link to an article in the american medical association's journal of ethics arguing for free will and it's like such a nonsense argument because i think what, if i remember correctly they're arguing they're saying well you know at the quantum level you know of reality not some things are not caused now first of all that's an insane assertion okay <laughs> because like you have to, things don't happen that aren't caused all right that's just like fundamental logic there has to be cause for it because like the only way that it could not be caused was if it caused itself nothing causes itself there's a term in latin nothing can be caused a sui all right so like and again after the big bang everything has a cause but what's even more baffling more enlightening about like how clueless even the american medical association is with this you know these guys should you know should know better is like they were they were trying to defend free will by arguing that that like well you know that um maybe maybe some things like our human decisions don't have causes maybe they're not governed by this law of cause and effect by the determinism okay that's how it's usually you know stated but 
the, the totally clueless aspect of that free will defense is like if, if our decisions, if our actions, if what we did, thought, felt, you know, et cetera, did not have causes, we couldn't obviously attribute them to a free will. They couldn't have been caused by us because, you know, if they're not caused, they're not caused. They're not caused by anything. All right. So, how, so like, you know, the, the, so again, it's the American Medical Association. It's like all these like new scientists, um, well, new scientists actually came out with a cover story refuting free will, but then they kind of backtracked and Scientific American, all right, again, they had a cover story, Scientific American Mind refuting free will, but in Scientific American, they defend free will. These are like our leading scientific, you know, popular publications, you know? Um, so it, it's kind of like, all right, so again, the, the value of this is like, um, and this is a cool thing, I mean, like at parties, you know, people go to parties during the, you know, if you, if you want to, like, you go to a party, right, over the holidays, and you want to see how smart somebody is, you know, not how educated they are, not how much they've learned, how much they've remembered, but how, how smart, how logical, how strong their logic is, ask them simply if they believe we have a free will or not, okay? If they say we have a free will, and you might have to explain the, um, what you mean by free will, because some people don't even, they, they haven't thought about this, you know, to be fair. So sometimes they think, well, free will is like political freedom, that we in the United States have like the freedom to say what we want, whereas in other countries they, they can't say as, as much of what we want, whatever. So like, you know, so you explain to them what, what you mean by free will. Ask them, you know, whether we have a free will or not. Wait for their answer, and that will tell you how intelligent they're not. Because like, you could help them along. You could say, well, you know, let, let's say they say, well, we have a free will because, yeah, what we decide is up to us. You know, nobody's making us decide what we do. Nothing is making us. Then you simply ask them, well, yeah, all right, well, give me an example of something that, that like, no, no. So you ask them, um, does, everything have, does, anything, does everything have a cause? All right. So like, and, you know, after you ask them why, you know, whether they think you have a free will or not, ask them. Does everything have a cause? Okay. So if they say yes, then obviously you just explain to them how cause and effect makes free will impossible. And if don't if they don't get it, again they're either not that bright or they're not intellectually mature. You gotta like you know because like our emotions you know on some of us will hijack our reasoning. It's not that they don't understand, but their emotions won't let let them understand. All right. So basically, so like you ask them that, and if they if they say no, some things don't have causes, then you kind of like explain to them, well, that doesn't have free will either. All right. So that's a very very simple way to test your friends, test test people who who claim to be intelligent, who go out and walk around, you know, seeming intelligent. Just ask them that 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 simple question. Um, it's one question. It's a litmus test. Okay. And yeah, with the maturity again, it's like you know. To be a scientist, to be a thinker, you have to be objective. You have to put aside your personal preferences. Like, you know, for example, people had to put aside their preference that, you know, that like they were created in the image of God and all this stuff, the Garden of Eden. You know, they had to look at the evidence, you know. People had to put aside their preference that we were the center of the universe. You know, we realized we're just like on the outskirts of this like Milky Way galaxy and we're ro revolving around the sun and stuff. I mean, you know. Basically, it's a matter of just like, again, objectively seeing things the way they are as opposed to whatever. All right, I've done enough about this, and we've got like three and a half minutes. I want to start doing some commercials. So like, all right, this show, this show is on every Wednesday here in White Plains at 7.30 and every Thursday at 9 p.m. here in White Plains. But I upload the uh, episodes to YouTube and a few other websites. And then I convert them to MP3, and um, they're accessible through iTunes. Okay, if you've got iTunes, again, Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. A um, couple of meetups. Uh, there's the meetup I started in Manhattan. The reason I started in Manhattan is like, you know, again, my basic purpose with this was to create a buzz, to get people talking about it. When people talk about it, they talk to writers, writers write about it, when writers write about it. Other people talk about it, so kind of like that's what's happened. Except you know, it's gotten to a point where people are saying, "Well, I don't want, I don't want there not to be free will." You know, I don't want to know this. So you know, the world is kind of like in a state of denial right now. But that that can't last for long. But anyway, so like this, I created this meetup, you know, because like in Manhattan, because Manhattan had like eight million people in it, and like the New York 
metropolitan area, which, which includes um, New Jersey and Connecticut, has a, a population of about 22 million. And a lot of, not a lot of these people, but some people go to meetup.com, you know, to, to look for meetups in Manhattan. So anyway, that's, I created that buzz. So this, this meetup, it's been going since um, April 2010. It's the first Saturday of each month, and it meets in the Sony Plaza, which is uh, on Madison Avenue between Madison and 5th, uh, between 55th and 56th Streets, okay? So it's right in Midtown Manhattan. Okay, we, we, we meet there, we start at 2 p.m. Again, the first, it's the first Saturday of each month, okay? so it's just once a month. And it's cool, we just had a meeting last week, and a lot of times meetups will last maybe an hour, two hours, whatever, but we routinely, you know, I think I left there around 5, 5.30. You know, we re routinely go for hours. One, a um, couple of months ago, we were there till like 8, because like, cause this is such a fascinating topic and all. So anyway, so we've got, we've got that meetup. Then there's a meetup that I, I started about a year ago here in White Plains called Life After Free Will. I first titled it, um, what did I title it? Um, Outgrowing the Free Will Fairy Tale. And I wanted to give the title a little edge, but then I thought about it. I said, like, you know, I don't want to offend people with it. So anyway, it's called, what is it called? It's called Living, you know, After Free Will, Life After Free Will. And with that meetup, um, we basically, it's, it's more for people who are, understand already the, that free will is an illusion. So we kind of like go through like what our life would be like, you know, if, if everybody got this. And then, all right, so then our second TV show, like I do with my co-host, Anel, he produces this one in Manhattan because he lives there. And it's like, it's on channel 56 in Manhattan, but, you know, they they stream those shows and a lot of times we're either live or when they're we're not live they're just like presenting this show you know this show gets you know presented to manhattan audiences and stuff all right we got 15 seconds so like i hope now you understand not only why free will is an illusion but how this is the perfect litmus test for how intelligent a person is in terms of critical analysis and morality thanks for watching we'll be back again hopefully